Commander, Hail Ming approaching. What do you mean, Hail Ming approaching? War Rocket Ajax is on our screen and heading right for us. Secure all posts. Raise all shields. Fire all lasers. Cue the music. going on everybody yes we are back for another episode of the hell ming power hour we've been uh kind of out of it a little bit but uh we've decided to regroup and and kick out another episode uh maybe a slight difference uh i think that uh, we've kind of gone back old school here with with uh, a couple of us i think mark's gonna kind of weave in and out as we go along he's got other responsibilities and we can understand that. Yeah, he is but, a uh, busy beaver, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, we, you know, don't freak out because he's not here, but you'll still be hearing him for sure. But I'm along with my old compadre. It's just mano a mano here. It's myself and Mr. Danny Bennett. What's going on, brother? I am just like a, a, a dirty reflection in a lackluster mirror. But, you know, when you come to me, I try and bring back something of what you give. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be back, and it's good to be talking about movies we love and movies that hopefully you'll run out and buy for yourself because you won't be able to wait to check them out based on our gleaming recommendation. So, yes, this is going to be a whole bunch of fun because this is a classic that we both really, really cherish. I remember going and seeing this in the theater back in the day. We are talking about 1977's Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Arguably the only Sinbad movie you have to see, but it's definitely that. I mean, the other ones are all great. I'm not, I'm not casting any dispersions on them, but, but Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger is kind of the opus of that whole series, in my opinion. That's a nice opinion. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, before we can go any further with the show, we have to talk about sponsors for the show, because that's how we make this whole show work. Uh, you you got any sponsors for us, Danny? I do. I managed to secure a uh, a lucrative sponsorship with the Vacuum House, and uh, the Vacuum House uh, is, has sales and services, and and their whole their whole theme, you know, what they want to get com- impart to you is that um, everything we sell sucks at the <laughs> Vacuum House. I, I mean, it's funny because as soon as you said Vacuum, I said, <laughs> yeah, it's going to have suck in the title somewhere. <laughs> 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 Well, you know, they, they know that it's funny, and that, that's what they bank on. You come in there, yeah. get yourself something that sucks. It's the vacuum what now? Vacuum the vacuum warehouse. house. Vacuum house. That's right. All right. Well, that kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, with our first uh, sponsor that I got this week. It's a, it's a new group coming out, you, uh, making uh, new styles of undergarments. And these guys are called Commando Underwear. Oh, that's dear. That's right. Commando Underwear. It's like wearing nothing at all. Yeah, that, that's what I hear. Um, yeah. Well, and I actually I managed to get a local firm, a law firm on our side. They're, uh, they're, they specialize in divorces. It's the, the law firm or, uh, of, uh, <clears throat> of Ditcher, Quick, and Hyde. That's right. Uh, Ditcher, Quick, and Hyde. The uh, divorce is our specialty. I think I just saw a special on them on uh, 2020 last <laughs> night. <laughs> Is 2020 oh. still come on? Really? 
Well, it's I think they're reruns because you know right now there's nothing to watch because everybody's uh, locked up and I, you know what's weird? What's weird? Passing through the channels and you see wrestling happening and they're wrestling and there's like no crowd. <laughs> it's like the most awkward thing to watch. <laughs> hey, and you know the real the really strange thing is you know since since the uh, the wrestlers are practicing social distancing, they're swinging and they still seem to be getting hit. Even from six feet away. Oh, uh, I just, I just love the, <laughs> I just love the fact that they do things to get a crowd reaction, and there's no crowd, you know. <laughs> yeah, man, it's oh. weird. I don't. Hey, you do what you got to do, but but while while you're watching wrestling, that's when you go check out our next sponsors to go along for a nice treat while you're watching. It's Roscoe's Potted Meat. That's right. It's Roscoe. I don't know if it's the same Roscoe from uh, from uh, Dukes of Hazard or not, but Roscoe's Potted Meat, and their slogan is "It's like meat in a pot." You know, that's 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 what I would expect from a Roscoe. He's he's kind of a straight shooter. So with that, that brings us right into. Did you watch anything, Danny? Yeah, yeah, I watched a um, you know, you know they've been doing all these live reboots lately. Um and they decided to to switch from doing these live reboots of TV shows and they they're going to do a live reboot of two TV shows pushed together. So instead yeah. of All in the Family and Cheers, it's it's actually a live reboot um, you know, starring Matthew McConaughey and um <clears throat> And, a, and an aged Pam Greer uh, called uh, Ale in the Family. Did, did, you, did you watch this, or is it something you're going to watch? <laughs> no. To <laughs> both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not okay, well, I, but thanks for saying so. Go ahead. <laughs> you know me. I'm a, I'm a big sucker for uh, uh, documentaries. And uh, I checked out one called Where's Russell? Uh, it's a documentary about a meatpacking plant started and shared by the Shard Brothers in 1986. And the tale of the financial gains and bad blood between the owners. And like I said, there's the two brothers. So Russell, the owner of the two brothers, didn't agree with the new venture that his brother had for a potted meat product. Which leads to the split in partnership, his brother gaining complete ownership of the company, and the disappearance of Russell. It's Bobcat Goathwaite is narrating this true story of money, greed, and meat byproduct. Wow. I think his brother was Roscoe. (laughs) I just think that was a meat product. Yeah, that's... uh, (laughs) Where's Russell? Where's Russell? So did you walk away from that, you know, unable to walk straight? Because I can't imagine that being much of a fun listen. Well... It really makes me question Roscoe's potted meat now because it's like meat in a pot. So it may be Russell. Russell's potted meat. <laughs> Russell's potted meat. That sounds like a different kind of uh, kind of movie, maybe. Um, <laughs> exactly. Not a good one. Not a good uh, one. Did you watch anything else? Nope. Well, alrighty then. That takes us right out of it. What did you watch? What did you watch? Folks, we'll be right back. Until then, you can snap into a Slim Jim. The Hailming Power Hour is brought to you by Rita Repulsa's ED Treatment. Magic Wand, Make My Monster Grow. And Loyal Subjects of Mongo Like You. Hail Ming! The following is a paid advertisement and proud sponsor of the Helming Power Hour. I'm losing my 
Folks, welcome back. We are getting ready to uh, check out the 1977 movie Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. It's the Eye of the Tiger. No, it's, it's been That's cool if that was the theme song, right? But before we do that, uh, you know we have to have a synopsis, right? So uh, to bring us the synopsis, this is somebody we haven't heard since the early days. And uh, we brought him back. Here's uh, for, to do Sinbad synopsis. Here's a crappy Jimmy Stewart. Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, a 1977 film. Move over, Pie Pie, because Sinbad the Sailor sailed to deliver a cursed prince to a dangerous island in the face of deadly opposition from a powerful witch. Don't eat the apple. It's rated G for G's. That's a lot of st- dangerous stuff there. <laughs> Curse, dangerous, deadly, powerful. I didn't know Sinbad did serious things. I thought he was a funny man. Well, IMDB gave it a, a 6.4. Well, if you divide that by 8, that's 8 tenths. Not bad, not bad. Oh, Jimmy. Wow. I, I kind of thought he would have something else to say after that. It seemed like he was leading us somewhere. Yeah, well, you know. Leading us to a <laughs> dangerous island. Hey, are we ready to get into the, the time machine and go on back to 1977? Absolutely. Folks, we, we haven't done this in a while, but uh, we with all the funding that we got and, and all of you guys not giving to our Patreon page, <laughs> we, we were able to scrounge up enough money to get the time machine running again. So here we go. Strap yourselves in. Okay, here we go. It's been a while. Did the wheel just come off? I don't remember being so bumpy. Oh, wow. Oh. That's, that's it's been a while. That was smooth. Uh, uh, hey, hey, 1977, man. You Here know, we I, are. I saw this movie in the theater, too. Oh, yeah? I did. I, I was I was younger than you, but I saw it in the wow. theater. Yeah. My, my mom actually took me to see this. Nice. Yeah. She don't remember it, though, because <laughs> I asked her about it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean... She said, what movie are you going to talk about? I said, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. She said, yeah, I don't know what that is. I said, you took me to see it! <laughs> Maybe she did. Did she just leave you there? It must have. Yeah. <laughs> like here, enjoy. I'm out. So here, here's one thing up about this movie. You know, we already talked about the synopsis. We kind of know what the story is. To me, this movie is like we we we, we said this before with Clash of the Titans about that kind of being the last hurrah for the Harryhausen type stuff. Yeah. 
But this movie was on track to do pretty well, and it, and it still was successful. But this is the same year Star Wars came out. So really, this was the death of this style of movie. I mean, that was the big change. So when you look at this, and you look at the first Star Wars, Episode Four, you see a very big contrast in, in special effects. And I think that's really what started hurting these style of movies, because these were on a roll. You know, you had uh, Golden Voyage in 73, then you started having you know, your remakes of Journey to the Center of Earth and all those kind of things happening. Uh, these are still fun, but you can really tell this is where the brakes were thrown on, <laughs> you know, as far as this style of movie making, because it still feels like you can almost take Seventh Voyage, which came out in the 50s, and compare this one, and very little has changed. You're still making the same style of movie. Not okay. that I'm complaining. It's I'm just true. saying that you kind of ran ran its course at this point. Yeah, it's kind of like that, a like a James Bond film. You got the same kind of hero. You yeah. got the same layout. And, uh, you know, it, it was... I, I think it's arguably Harryhausen that made these movies worth seeing. You're right on the money because the acting was always kind of cardboardish from what, no matter what movie you pick of these. Yeah, and, and you went from monster to monster just waiting to see what it was going to be next. Right. So with that I mean, being said, I mean, I mean, you've got you've got some stuff you want to talk about before we get into it, or no, no. I mean, I I remember like like I said, I remember going to the theater to see it, and it must have been after I saw Star Wars because Star Wars was the first theater movie I saw. Mm-hmm. But um, I do remember the the end sequence with the uh, with the Aurora Borealis and the and the cage and all that. I remember seeing that in the theater as a kid. And yeah. um, so, you know, just like movies tended to run for several years, it probably was just in that run time. And uh, we went to the theater to see it then. And it was it was still impressive, and, sure. but it was no Star Wars. Like you said, you know, it was kind of the death knell of this, the, this kind of series of movies. Right. And as a kid, I mean, this is still the only version that you got to see. It's either this or more of the kaiju thing with a dude in a giant suit. This was your other version of seeing big monsters on the screen so you would take whatever you could get and uh yeah man uh it's still a lot of fun and we're going to talk about what the fun stuff is in this movie so you want to kick us off what's your what's your number one reason danny to watch eye of the tiger man so the the first reason i've got written down i mean there there might be something that that tripped my trigger before this but is 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 a whole bunch of firebug demons getting crushed by some lincoln logs yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's like it's not enough that that the firebug demons are, are are stop motion, but also they just used miniature sticks and made it look like it was a bunch of big logs. Absolutely, and you can tell, man. <laughs> yeah, and just the the whole idea of, of Patrick Wayne taking his sword out or, or Sinbad and reaching over and trying to hit this imaginary string that you know is not even really there because it's a miniature. But yeah, you're right. You could tell that these were very very small. But, you know, it, it, it works, you know. I guess back in the day, you probably couldn't tell because we've I'm, gotten so, so much better with the graphics. I, I think there was just, you know, there, there, was, there was less expectation for things to be so seamless. You know, you looked at it and you say, oh, I know what that was. That's kind of cool. And you moved on. But, um, but these, de- these demon bugs, man, were cool, though. They're awesome. I think. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't your average uh, Harryhausen skeletons, you know, or, or a monster. They were, they were these kind of like insectoid looking looking fighters with uh but they had swords and shields didn't they or just swords they had swords just, and shields yeah because i think they they clap the the blade on their on their shield a couple of times but yeah the the thing is is every one of these movies you're going to have somebody with black magic come up and throw some stuff on the ground and some skeletons or demonoids or something will come up out of the ground with swords you know so yeah it's just part of the, 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 the folklore of all this. And it's still it's still awesome. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, you knew it was going to be a fun fight. Oh, you know, yeah. Except for that one dude who got poisoned before it happened. Like, <laughs> Don't drink it. It's poison. They, they, and they straight up tried to poison him and his men. You know, they're like, uh-oh, well, Sinbad's here. Well, just, just, just poison them all. Come on to my tent. There are women and there's wine. Oh, yeah, great. I mean, Nothing <laughs> suspicious about that. The, the whole idea of... You know, our 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 lead bad person here is basically wanting her son to be the the crowned king, and it's falling onto this prince. 
So, you know, what you do in order to keep the prince from being crowned, you just turn him into a baboon. Yeah. <laughs> and then let me let me say of of the, of, of, uh, of Prince Kasim, you know, like who who was about to be turned caliph at the beginning and then like um he gets turned into a baboon. I'm not sure that the baboon was a was a was a downgrade as far as looks wise. <laughs> He, he was kind of like a long nosed Christopher Plummer. That's what I saw. I just, I just love the fact of that's that's the creature we decided to go with. <laughs> you know, it's almost like, uh, hey Ray Harryhausen, what creature have you not used in a movie yet? Uh, I've got a baboon. Yeah, that or. <laughs> well, that that leads you to all the chess playing baboon things, which you know, got to have that. Well, my number one reason is why not his big brass boat. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I love the idea of we're gonna, you know, Sinbad's gonna try to help change the baboon back, and it's just a, it's a road movie from there on. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, chasing each other across the seas, it's which a, is the fastest, the fastest seven days of travel ever. Yeah, I agree. And every time they got someplace, it was like, oh, we're here at the land. I, I guess we can walk right to where we need to be. But, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm just, you know, they even go to the Antarctic. And I'm like, can you really get there in seven days in a sailboat? <laughs> you can if you're Sinbad. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, this brass boat, our, our bad people have built, everything is, is based off of brass for some reason. And it's real sleek, small de- design, and it's powered by somebody that we will bring up next, I'm sure, because it's probably my favorite reason to even watch the movie. But uh, it's it's small, it's kind of aerodynamic, kind of stealthy looking. Uh, it's a cool boat. Yeah, I don't disagree, <laughs> man. I mean, it's it's a cool boat. the The one question I have about it will come up when we get to talking about, you know, like you said, the next thing coming up. And I'll go ahead and and I'll break that right now and say. Minotaur, the the yeah. the brass minotaur, you know they stick a clock in his in his chest and they're like, with this mechanical art, I bring him to life. And then you know he's minotaur, he can he he can row for the strength of six men, sixty men. So so he's rowing, and when he rows, all these other oars are going right. And here's where my question comes in: the the king's men are checking him out, and they're like, oh look look, there's a boat out there. We'll go check it out. And they get in their dinghy. They go out to the to the boat, right? And Zenobia, she sees them, and she's like, "Oh, you know what? We we got to knock them out." And she says, "Minotaur, turn the boat." Around. So this is yep. where I have my problem. How does Minotaur turn the boat, man? He has one lever. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not steering. He's just paddling, right? <laughs> and and, what, and if if he's not steering the boat, why tell him? And if he is steering the boat, how? I'm just that, my question. And just the fact that he builds up enough speed to ram them and kill them all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, well, he he doesn't kill that one dude. So you get that oh, yeah. one that scene of him spearing the guy and lifting him up and throwing him in yeah. the water on the other side. It's pretty badass. It's pretty awesome because he could have just stabbed him in the water and been done with it. He didn't have to pick him up. It's I'm true. I'm pretty sure he he probably would have died just from the stabbing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it wasn't throwing him off on the other side of the boat that that killed that dude. No, nah, no, nah. but it was showing Minotaur's strength, right? Yeah, Minotaur, man, brass Minotaur, Minotaur. super yep. cool. And and the heart, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, you know, the, we get to see him actually put the heart into him, and his eyes open up, and he comes to life. But the heart is just, you know, it's it, it's it doesn't really keep a regular time. It just kind of goes tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, it's tick-tock. like a little, it's like a little pocket watch looking thing too. It, yeah, yeah, it's like a steampunk, you know, piece of jewelry. <laughs> But you know that just adds to the whole like mystique of the movie. You know, there's so many little weird things in it. He, she could have just brought him to life like she brought the uh, the the insectoid fighters to life and just like thrown powder and it blows up and he stands up. But it, there's cool little things in the movie that make it, I don't know, just a little bit better. Sure. Uh, did you know that uh, supposedly I read this uh, in, in doing a little research, but uh, Peter Mayhew played uh, Minotaur when it was like some like real live action shots or whatever. Oh, so that was his hand on the on the on the <laughs> yeah, plinth there that moved. <laughs> we need a really tall guy so we can shoot his hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what he would have had a chance to do, but I, I guess he acted about as much as he did with Chewie. Wait, did, did I just say that? Never mind, yeah. people. <laughs> Chewbacca is an excellent actor. You know what? I'm just going to throw this in there, and we don't have to dwell on it, but, but Jane Seymour and some cornrows. Yeah. Jane Seymour <laughs> with some cornrows. I mean, uh, worth watching well, just to check it out. Well, I, I, I see what you brought forward, and I'm going to bring up uh, Jane Seymour with her hair that's been crimped. Right, because that's what happens when you, when you, when you plait your hair and you leave right. it there for a little bit. You know, it comes down perfectly crimped like, like you're uh, an exotic pirate wench from 1982. Yeah. Not a bad look. We could have just, could have just stopped at Jane Seymour, and that would have been fine. So Yeah, I agree want to Do we want to talk about Patrick Wayne for any reason because <laughs> I remember as a kid thinking okay he looks more like a cool Sinbad than the ones in the other movies but Patrick Wayne is really not a good actor <laughs> yeah you know I, I hardly even notice him like you know he he swings a sword around and kisses the girl and then that's about it I, I read a thing where they said that you know when he got the part and they dressed him up, and they let him grow the beard, and they said, man, he, he had the look. And they said, but we were in trouble as soon as he opened his mouth. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I, heard and, that- and nothing, I mean, of course, he's, he's John Wayne's son, so, I mean, you know, I guess that was that, you know, the clout of trying to live off of that. But he's just not a good actor. Yeah, I, I didn't know any of this. So, yeah. now I do. Show enough. Show enough. Show enough. Wrong movie, but show enough. You know what? I wouldn't have been surprised if a uh, if a stop motion show enough showed up as the bad guy in the end of this one. That would have been interesting in that last twenty five seconds of of chaos that happens. Man, well, it just they threw they threw everything with a kitchen sink in that last that last fight, man. <laughs> oh, so what you got next? I have another question. Okay, so Minotaur can't steer the boat, obviously, but but here's a question I've got. Zenobia shows up. She's in a, a palanquin, you know, being carried by all these people down the middle of the street. Man, her palanquin's being carried by a bunch of harem girls. Yeah. I mean... Equal rights. Equal rights. Zenobia was ahead of the curve when it came to, to equal work for, for both genders, and, and I appreciate it. I also got to say that she does the best Bette Midler impersonation of, uh, of, of any, you know, sorceress that I've ever seen in a movie. She's got this whole throaty, like, oh, you go ahead. And she's got this, this R- Russian accent. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Which makes perfect sense when you're in, in a, I don't, I don't Mesopotamia? know. Mesopotamia? I yeah. don't know where they're supposed We're to definitely, be. Definitely definitely not in Russia. So, <laughs> No, but Zenobia is mean, man. She's yeah, got the yeah, eye of the is. tiger. Yeah. Well, my, my next thing is uh, you get to see a naked girl pet a monkey. It's true. And in 1977, it was harder to come across that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hail Ming. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's a scene where Jane Seymour and our other l- young lady that ends up uh, joining the fold, uh, they reach the, uh, I don't know what land they're at at this point. <laughs> they, they've jumped around so much, but, uh, you know, they go for a little uh, skinny dipping, some fun here, a bath or whatever, and... Uh, yeah, they're they don't have much clothing on, and uh, you know she pets the baboon for a while, and everything's okay for some reason. Yeah, that's 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 when they get to Hyperborea, right? Where right before they pick up Trog, yeah. and and it's Naked a good girl reason. Petting a monkey. It's a it's a good reason. As a matter of fact, you know the, the 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 desire to to look in on this guy is another reason of mine. Like the window washer just wanted to peep on Jane Seymour, and instead he got into a fight with a baboon. <laughs> And he's out there tarring the boat, right? You know, he's, he's got, oh, I'm just going to look in this window. You know, and he looks in the window, and Jane Seymour's in there. And what's she doing? She's, she's playing chess with the baboon. And he's like, what is this? And it makes him so mad that he decides to come on in and, like, make himself known. The baboon attacks him. And that's when it revealed that, you know, it's not the baboon at all. It's, it's Christopher Plummer. And uh, he, he, he likes to play chess. So. Yep. But I mean, this dude—he's—he's kind of—he's kind of Simbad's, you know, uh, I, I don't know, like uh, sleazier kind of companion. He's—he's he's the guy who's always like, "Oh, well, we could just slit their throats and take all their stuff," you know. He's that guy. And uh, no, you know, no, 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 calm down, calm down. These are the good people. <laughs> <laughs> True. 
Yeah, he's kind of the gopher, right? I mean, you know, he's he's always on board, but he's he's ready to throw down at any moment, and he he gets his chances from time to time. But uh, he survives. Know, it, it, it yeah, it's a wonder he doesn't die like from the beginning because he's just one of those people's like, <laughs> you want to fight? Let's go, you know. I guess the the black dude in there, you know, and I'm just saying that because there was only one, not not because I wish I knew his name, but I don't. He says like, I owe my life three times to Sinbad, and then like in the next scene, he's dead. <laughs> it's like what about so and so he's gone like they didn't even like he gets saved and that's worth mentioning but when he dies it's just like off screen somewhere you know it, it's it's not called Sinbad's group of men <laughs> in the eye of the tiger <laughs> Sinbad in the eye of the tiger it is 12 compatriots yeah yeah I get you <laughs> so yeah everybody's expendable because you know Sinbad's got to be the one that, that makes it at the end which we forgot to even mention that he decides that he's going to go save the prince, one, because, you know, it's a friend of his. But two, the way he gets paid, he gets to throw down with Jane Seymour. That's right. He's I like, mean, you think- can not pay me with the what, but with who? <laughs> and, yeah, this is okay, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's the old world. That's, uh, that's kinda she was work, into it. She, she, was she into wouldn't. It. She wouldn't disagree in, right? She, she was, was like, oh, it. yeah, that's a good, that's a good plan, Dad. Yeah. So it's like with me though. It's like, well, if she's going on the trip anyways, then, I mean, isn't she already like sure? Why do we wait? Why do we wait till then? Let's just get it on now. I, you know, because the plot gods require things. But I think we might be straying a little too much. So, so our reasons <laughs> to watch the movie, and we've got we got Jane Seymour, we got awesome monsters, we got Minotaur, the the brass uh, uh, Minotaur, and his and his ship. That's that's Zenobia's ship, and Zenobia is scary. Okay, we we make fun yeah. of her, but she's scary, man. Yeah, she is. Yeah, you, you're a I kid mean, watching I, I, Zenobia. She's scary. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to meet her now. No. So especially, you know, just to catch what up. happens to her later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that and that that's something that I want to talk about just just with a little bit of length because sure. Yeah. So you know, but, but first I got to get to to the, the dangerous blue screen island, right? So. <laughs> Blue Screen Island is is where they go and oh, they find uh, Dione and and uh, Melanthius, you know the the yeah. the old guy who's going to help them turn Prince Cassim back, and and like I don't know why they can have scenes of the people walking through a valley, but then when it comes time to show the actors up close, they've got to <laughs> blue screen the valley. Could they not do those scenes at the same time? Well, and of course the problem is there. Is back in the day when you shot this stuff, there was no thing as so-called HD or anything like that. So people didn't really worry about that stuff. But you're exactly right. You watch it now and you're like, "Wow!" The only way I can describe it is it must be pickup shots. Maybe something changed, right? And they had to go back and redo lines, and they just took still shots and put it behind them, and it it does look bad. <laughs> well, like you said, they move so fast in so many different directions in this movie. Maybe they decided later we need a little explanation. So the scenes where they're up close, they're describing, oh, here's where we are, and we're here because we're trying to find this guy. Whereas yeah. they felt like it would be intuitive when they filmed it in the first place. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's a weird one. But it's all worth it because uh, Melanthius is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, he was one of the Doctor Whos, too. Yeah, right. Of course, he didn't look like Moses at that point, but... <laughs> Moses! And, you know, I will say that, you know, my, my stomach started hurting and my doctor did say Melanthius. <laughs> Not Bad <Malanta>. joke. <laughs> Bad joke. Uh, so where are, we, where are we at? Is it you or is it me? It's you. It's me. Well, <laughs> I kind of said it while I go, but I have to go with the trog, man. The troglodyte. Uh... It, it's it's very reminiscent of the Cyclops from the first Sinbad movie, except he's you know he's a trog, so uh, not a great thinker. Uh, feels threatened at first when he sees all of them. Of course, you know then oh well, he they're sensitive to the female of the gender. So you know you get uh, the 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 Melithius's daughter. I guess it's his daughter or is it her yeah, yeah, niece? Yeah, D- Dione. But, yeah. She's Melanthe's daughter and tries tries talking to him and he's like not as scared. But then the baboon walks up and they have a full fledged conversation going on. And that's right. kinda how this whole thing works because, you know, he's a trog. And and I'll give it to Melanthe's man, like like he is, is more than willing to put the women in the party like right up front and center with just about anything. 
like, you know, the women probably won't, won't upset him. Dude, go! You know, like, just, yeah. just pushing it at the monsters. Well, I think there's one point in the movie where he says, you know, do what you want to to the girl, just leave me alone. <laughs> hey, Ming. <laughs> uh, it, it, I want to say, so when they go to get Melanthius, I, I kind of synopsized how the conversation goes. He says, no, I won't go. It won't work. And then he finds this key, and he's like, hey, I've got this key. Hey, watch this laser. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I've, I've got some of his stuff, too, because his, the whole time through the whole trip, all he's doing is complaining, like, we don't have enough time for that. We're running out of time. Hey, there's a way we can go right there. Hey, uh, we can't go. If we could only go through the tunnel, it would save us so much time. But we don't have time. <laughs> he yeah, he's a, he's a surly old bat, man. <laughs> uh, that's what I got. I got Melanthius' time rants because he does it the whole time. We don't have enough time. Yeah, Melanthius. Hey, Melanthius, uh, you want a part of this sandwich? We don't have enough time for a sandwich. He can't complain about anything. You know, he, he really, he makes some dicey decisions. Yeah, he does. Because he don't have time to think. That's it. <laughs> it's like, do you think I learned to be wise by taking my time? I was like, yeah, we were living alone on that island, or with your as, with, with your daughter. As, but as cool like, as he is, uh, the, the trog, the trog to me is the hero of the day, man. I mean, he he, he takes it for the team. Yeah, troglodyte is is one hundred percent the hero of the day, more so than Sinbad. Yeah. I mean, Sinbad doesn't beat any... Well, I mean, I think Sinbad steps in after Trog gets killed, but... Well, yeah, after, after Trog's done the damage to the, to the, the saber-toothed tiger, then yeah. he's like, oh, okay, I can take it from here. He's like the king from <laughs> Dragon Slayer, going over and stabbing the dead body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a good comparison, I like that. Thanks. Okay, I'm just going to lay this out. This, this, this part of the movie haunted me. And I know you know where I'm going. Uh-huh. Zenobia transforms herself to a bird so she can go spy on the other ship. Becomes a little mini Zenobia, is running around as a as a as a you know, six inch tall woman on the on the the, the ship. She gets caught. Melanthius puts her under a jar and he's all scary looking through the jar at her and he's like, Well, we'll have to interrogate her. He like scares her to death with this wasp. And then he finds her a magic potion and decides to feed it to the wasp. And then they have to kill this wasp. I mean, like, this whole thing is... And then she comes back and she doesn't have enough potion left. So she uh, ends up having a, a big albatross leg, man. Right. Yeah. And, and that whole sequence is just, like, so bizarre. Yeah. I mean, it, it, well, it's part uh, Bride of Frankenstein. They They do a lot of these visuals in Bride of Frankenstein. Obviously, that's where they pulled some of it. But the whole deal of, hey, I'm going to feed it to this bee here and see what happens. Next thing you know, you get a you know three-foot-long bee flying around, and he's swatting at it with paper. I'm like, dude, pick up something else, you know? Well, <laughs> that you mouth know, is not going to do it. Sinbad runs in and, and, and throws the letter opener at it, and then it's just like a little rubber bee stuck to the wall, you know? But <laughs> but I guess it, it you know, he, that, was, that was his moment. That was his and, trog moment. And while that's going on, you know, she's going back over to the potion that's been spilled out and just lapping it up on the floor. And just like, man, this is psycho. That's weird, man. Turns back into Albatross, flies across, gets back to her boat, changes back, but it wasn't enough potion. And then it pans down to her leg. And I was like, yeah, webbed feet. So here's my question. Does yeah. an Albatross have webbed feet? Well, you know, I... I, I remember it being an albatross, but but watching it, I guess it was a seagull or something. Seagull. It, it was still, just like a bird it, leg, man. I mean, well, it's like a duck leg. I don't. Yeah. I don't, does does a seagull have webbed feet, or do they have like claws? I don't know, but like they, they have that they have that reveal um, instrument when they show her leg. It's like that. <laughs> you know, and, and and whenever that noise happens, you know it's something bad. You know, right. it's like somebody's throat's been slit or somebody's mom is dead or something. Like, that That noise is never good. So my question is, is how can, can she determine what you turn into when she takes this stuff? I mean, It seems like magic just does what magic does, man. Like, yeah. you take your magic potion, you throw it at stuff, and see what happens. I mean, it's like, hey, I'm going to, you know, when the prince is about to be crowned, I'm going to make this fire jump up, and he's going to turn into whatever kind of animal. 
Oh, baboon. All right. Kick ass. She, <laughs> I mean, she poured some know. of that stuff on Minotaur too. She was like, I'm pouring this stuff on him. It was just like all-purpose magic potion. <laughs> it's the WD-40 <laughs> of its time. We need to see if we can get them as a sponsor. All-purpose magic potion. Hey, just let it do one. what it do. Yeah, work on that one next time. Let's see if that uh, see if that turns out lucrative for us. Yeah, I make no promises. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got the, our our bad person hobbling around with a duck foot. <laughs> and the next on my list. Yeah. Oh man. So again, going back to the brass boat. You know, there's there's this tunnel that's a, a quicker passageway. Sinbad boats is too big, so they have to go around a ship basically. But uh, Winona's big brass boat, it can go right in this cave. And they find the quick pay, the quick way in. And I love the fact of, you know, do they get there just at the time when they jump out? Or had they been there a while, been hiding? I haven't figured this out yet. But I love the fact of we've chased them all across the, the planet at this point. Through the Antarctic. Through all the, the other areas as well. And we get to this point where... Her son, Rafi, is supposed to be the one that's going to be taking the throne. Jumps out with a sword on top of a staircase that goes into a magical waterfall, I guess. Well, it's it's the Aurora Borealis. It's like this magnetic wave where the 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 northern lights come up out of that place. Yeah, it looks like a waterfall. <laughs> yeah, it's weird looking, yeah. I mean, but he jumps out and says... You know, his mom says, "Kill him!" And he goes for the baboon, and he missteps and lands on the monkey, and they tumble down the steps, and it breaks his neck. I love the fact that we've chased them all this time, and within I don't know twenty seconds of seeing them, dude gets killed, and I'm pretty sure she's just going, "Oh crap! I didn't think about that." Yeah, yeah but in, in, you're right though. She totally says. Go get him. Go go kill him. You know, like like she she throws him into like ten dudes to go kill him. Like 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 what did you think was gonna happen? I mean these stair the staircase is like super steep, right? So I mean dude I mean breaks his neck. And it's just the, the, the expression of Oh crap, I didn't think this through very well. Here's a reason to watch. Ma- Rafi with his neck broken. I mean yeah. he's like all bent and twisted at the bottom of that staircase. I mean, it's really good. That's probably the best yeah. acting in the movie. Yeah, it's good. It does look good. But not just a few minutes before this, you had uh, the ending of, of Minoton because he actually pulled out one of these big blocks that, that's one of the passageways. And when he pulls it out, he just pulls it out on top of himself and squishes himself. So he dies about as useful as Boba Fett does in Return of the Jedi. It's just one of those, really? Yeah. We had this character this far, and this is what happens? Yeah, Zenobia like throws some more magic potion at the rock. He's, and she's like, uh, and that when she says, oh, great mystery, reveal your secret. Or maybe she says something <laughs> about the dark gods or something. And she, you know, loosens it, I guess, with the explosion. And then Minotaur, and this might be where, where Peter Mayhew really got to act. You know, Minotaur maybe. starts moving the, the rock, and he's like, <laughs> and then, then the thing falls on him. Um. <laughs> Just a waste of a great character. I mean, you know, we've been I always thought all so this too. time. It's like, can't wait for the showdown, because how are they going to stop him? Oh, he's going to get crushed by a big rock. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Trog versus Minotaur, but I guess, you know, maybe Ray Harryhausen, you know, was like, no, he gets crushed by a block. I'm done with that guy. <laughs> I don't like animating that metal thing. Give me a cat. <laughs> Give me a walrus. A walrus. <laughs> the giant walrus. In In my... Okay, so yeah, and, and as a kid, I even as a kid, man, the walrus fight, you can fast forward. Yeah. Yeah. That is where the and, dude's like, Sinbad has saved my life because he gets dragged toward the <laughs> ice hole for like the ice hole. <laughs> he gets dragged toward the ice for like for like twelve scenes, you know, like, oh, cut me loose. Get your knife, cut me loose. <laughs> And the, the walrus is running away. I might preface this. A walrus comes up out of the ice. That's it. Um, then they fight that walrus. And then one of the dudes gets wrapped up in a net that the walrus is dragging. And, and then he's like, cut me loose. And he's like Nanog and, and Krull. You know, it, it, it just takes forever for them to save this guy. And then they save him. And he's like, oh, I woke my life to Sinbad for a third time. And then, and then he dies in like the last act anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
Way to, way to support us there, man. Uh, yeah. your, your, your ending didn't really you know, help us at all, but okay. Just just forget yeah, the yeah. walrus fight. If yeah, you're the watching the movie. walrus coming up, and they're like, hey, aim for its eyes. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I yeah, just I love mean, the fact that they run out in the ice like, hey, look, it's cracking. What could it be? I don't know. Maybe you ought to get out of there. <laughs> walrus fight. Big thumbs down. Yeah. It, I mean, and, and that's another thing they talked about with this movie is they got away from a lot of the the weirder monsters and stuff. They went with more, like, actual creatures, you know, the walrus, the seagulls, the the bee. I mean, they, instead of it being, here's a seven-armed cyclops or, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's a dragon in one of them that... Is it Golden Voyage where they've they've yeah. got a cl- collar on his neck and the and yeah. the wizard cranks him back to the wall? That, that's good stuff. Yeah. Hey, actually, the wizard the wizard from uh, Golden Voyage is another Doctor Who. It's uh, it's Tom Baker. Well, they just got all hooed up in that place, didn't they? Didn't they? They were like, well, "Who can we get?" Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what monster is good? The saber toothed damn tiger. He, he's a fluffy. He's very fluffy. He's fluffy. So, so when they first go into this this uh, this shrine, and Rafi, you know, has his unfortunate end. Um, then you know, so so Zenobia, her her eyes turn into the eyes of the tiger, which which happens throughout the movie. That's kind of your reasoning for the title. And he, she becomes a green mist and and fills this this frozen saber tooth tiger that you know that was the guardian of the shrine. And, uh, you know, it's starting to melt, so he breaks loose, and then they've got this, you know, evil wizard slash saber tooth tiger to fight. Right. And so Trog steps up, finds Minotaur's spear. Yeah. And starts using it. At first, he's like, hey, this is almost big enough for me to use as a weapon. <laughs> yeah, he drops his club and picks up the spear, which might not have been a good move, because later he's trying Probably to, like, not. swing it. <laughs> he's like yeah. swing this thing and it's like man it's pointy stab with it yeah well you know Trog's not the smartest I mean that's that's just a given right but uh, you know he's he's doing what he can uh, yeah I think if he had a better weapon selection he had had a, had a better shot he could have just stabbed it with the horn on his head yeah yeah he was he was um, he was like a caveman unicorn which should be all powerful in my book I'm sure it was a magical horn. But yeah, I mean, the the fight scene here, I mean, it, it's stop motion mastery. I mean, it's just, you know, the thing is, is the, the t- saber tooth tiger is really fluffy. So something that's been, you know, captured in ice all this time and it comes out and it's it's not slick. It's like poofy, you know. It's magic. It <laughs> yes. just got to blow dry, you know. <laughs> But that, with that being said, I mean the fight between uh, the saber tooth and the trog is 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 great. That's why you're watching this movie. Right? Yeah, yeah. I and mean, who cares whether or not the the prince gets transformed back? I mean, yeah, but who cares? You're there to watch the troglodyte fight the saber tooth tiger, and 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 really wonder the whole time why it's not the troglodyte fighting Minotaur. I'd have loved it when they pulled him down out of the out of the lights and he changed back to the prince and they saw him if they just said yeah you know what you let's put him back as the monkey <laughs> he was <Right>. better off <laughs> just put him back in there no well, wait wait you've healed me i appreciate it no we want the baboon back <laughs> yeah we we like the baboon he could talk to trog <laughs> we need so, somebody to tell trog to leave that tiger alone <laughs> tell trog you stab with a spear what the hell man <laughs> So yeah, they they tra- they transform Prince Cassian back. It's not why you're watching the movie, but just in case you were you were bated breath waiting for the end. Yeah, that's what happens. He gets transformed well, back, and then there's yeah. a wedding at the end, right? But yeah, I mean that's the thing is, is while that's going on, they're just showing the credits over. Yeah, so the, even the people making the movie knows it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've, I've got I've got it in my notes. Jan Housen was the hairdresser. I know because it's right in front of Prince Cassian's face during his wedding. <laughs> It's like it ends like a kung fu movie, you know. It's like okay, no right, more fighting, yeah. and it's over. Yeah, I mean, it could have only been better if it just cut away to you know, like Sinbad and Jane Seymour in bed, like a hey, oh, like a like a James right. Bond flick or something. <laughs> With Jane Seymour too, she was in a James Bond flick like she, that too. She was a Bond, yeah, a bunch. Of, well, and in the Golden Voyage, you had uh, Carolyn Monroe, which was another Bond girl. So there you go. 
Yeah. You might remember from Captain Kronos. Yeah. Captain Kronos, yeah. yeah. And Star Crash. Did you ever see Star Crash? Um, no, it's not no. a um movie. You either saw it or you didn't. <laughs> I haven't seen Star Crash. I had to yeah. think because I wanted to get, didn't want to get it confused with another similar title. It's it's pretty terrible, but it's one of those so bad it's good movies. You know, it's it's a short bus film for sure. I'm just gonna say right now for the the Hail Ming listeners, you know may, maybe this is is enjoyable if you're a fan of Sinbad movies. I definitely still went back to being a kid and really enjoying yep. it, but I mean it doesn't hold up. I got to right. be honest. It, it still gives me the warm and fuzzies because of the nostalgia, but I'm kind of the same way. I mean it it's uh. We would complain if they made new Sinbad movies and it was all CGI because we'd be like, ah, you, yeah, CGI. Right. But these, these are, like I said, at this point, when this came out, this you were really just squeezing every drop out of this type of movie making that you could. And there's a reason that it stopped, you know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, is it fun to watch? Sure. Just don't expect a lot. To, to walk away with because it's not that kind of movie. Yeah, I mean, and I would love to say that it's a, a fast forward kind of movie. You can skip all the bad acting and the plot, but even if you fast forward through it, other than that section in the middle that I pointed out where she flies over and becomes small and all that, that's kind of a trippy, interesting yeah. little point. But with the it, effects being what they are now, it, it's really hard to say it, it'd be worth watching those for fun. Even her transformation. Because it's one of those Technicolor wonders, you know, where where she just, you know, magically they they blur out the screen in color, and then it, she's turned into a seagull. It's very reminiscent of some of the stuff that they used in altered states, some yeah. of the color flashes and stuff they did. So I mean, it, it that's still, you know, like you said, it's very trippy. It it, it does draw you in, and you're focusing on these things. They're just kind of short lived. Well, and and the creepiest part is the fact that you know. She's screaming, and then it yeah. becomes the the seagulls, uh, you know, yeah. screeching. Yeah, and 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 that, like again, like I said, it's just more like a nightmare sequence. And there's something really dreamily eerie about the whole thing. But I'm, you know, again, I, I can't say based on that, it, it's worth you spending two hours of your life watching it. You know, right? And without Melanthius and, and Zenobia's acting, this thing really falls flat. True, because everybody they're both else really is good. Kinda, kind of cardboard just like everybody else in all the other Sinbad movies. So, if you're watching a Sinbad movie, you know what you're getting. Yeah. You're not getting you're not getting a, a work of art that's going to, you know, get an Oscar. You're looking at special effects and a reason, you know, some some sword sword play and, you know, adventure type stuff. That's Yeah, that's weird monsters on. and yeah. and and dashing adventurers and and scantily clad maids, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. I, I will say that I, I do want to draw attention. If you do find yourself watching this, when Zenobia does go through the tunnel, because that's how they beat him to the, the shrine, is their, their ship is small enough to go through the tunnel that Melanthius knew about. Um, there's all these sepulchers or, or, or coffins along the walls. Yeah. And the look on, on, on Rafi and, and, and Zenobia's faces while they're watching these things is priceless. Probably because there's nothing there. They're just being instructed like actors. You know, Lois pointed that out. I didn't even think about it. They're being instructed. Now, now look at the wall. Now you see corpses and boxes. You know, so like the look on their face is hilarious. All right, so that's going to bring us up to I don't even have rating time. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm going to give it uh, 27 Timex Miniton hearts. Ooh. Well, I'm gonna give it a, um, I'm gonna give it a big trog club, replaced by a big bronze Miniton spear. All right. And, and that thing had to be what, 16 feet long? That that was that spear was huge. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. It's like it it doesn't make sense when the trog picks it up because it should have been a lot smaller to him. But hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Why well, was he bigger? Than, than Minotaur. Well, the, the, well, the Trog was big, but Minotaur was almost kind of human sized. Yeah, he was. He was kind of like nine feet tall. He was like a yeah, yeah, kind of in he, between. Yeah. yeah. So his spear would have been kind of small for Trog, but hey, anyways, what are we complain about? So we haven't heard from him in a while, but uh, Brian Blessed, what do you think about Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger? 
Give me the remote control. Uh, ah. I guess he's not a fan. Well, you know, it's no Flash Gordon. Well, ain't that the truth? Mm. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Have you been injured on the job? How about being seriously maimed while chasing an enemy of your family? Sometimes you can't be too safe. And that's why I invented Rafi's Neck Brace. Injuries can happen in the heat of battle. And a little protection can go a long way. And I'm not just the owner. I'm a client. So trust your safety with our original blend of synthetic fibers that supports but doesn't make you sweat. Yes, your neck may not work, but at least it can breathe. So send your money orders now to P.O. Box Does this I Hate That Baboon familiar? to get yours today. Where do we want to go on because vacation? Is a terrible I want to go to camping. Waste. I vote amusement park. Music festival. The beach. No one can ever agree. Now you can have it all without leaving your home. With Blue Screen Island as seen on Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger. Sun and sir, this is the life. I wish it was warm though. This is great to look at. Wow, fun for them. It's almost like being there. Almost. With the new Corona Special, you can tour these new locales. Like school. It's like I'm back. And the ever popular stocked grocery store. <gasps> Look at all the toilet paper. Blue Screen Island. Book yours today. Minuton, Minuton, he is stronger than anyone. Rolls a ship really fast, grabs a spear, stabs your ass. Look out, stronger than any other. He's really one bad mother. Here comes the Minuton. When we last left Minuton, Dr. Klon and Shiki were close to finding the lost treasure. Shiki, I am sure there's an opening around here somewhere. I'm sure we'll find it, Dr. Klon. Be on the lookout for any source of openings. Dr. Klon, I feel air coming around this huge boulder. Hmm, I'm sure our treasure is right behind this huge boulder. But how do we get it out? I know, Dr. Klon. How about we get Menaton to do it? Great idea, Shiki. Minuton! Come here a minute! Minuton, I need you to pull this boulder out of the way. Do you think you can do it? Fantastic! Stand back, Shiki! You've almost got it! Oh no, Dr. Klon! The boulder fell right on top of Minuton! I see that. Oh well. Good job, Minuton. See you later, Minuton! Stronger than any other. He's really one bad mother. Here comes the Minuton! folks hey we hope you enjoyed this episode it's great to go back and visit these even if it doesn't live up to the expectations of what you remember um uh, i still love this movie regardless it's going to be one of those that if it's on i'm still going to watch the the high points and i'll probably go do something else when it's not at the high points but uh again it, it still gives me the warms and fuzzies when i watch it 
But uh, if you have ideas for something you want us to cover, let us know, right? So yeah. we got a fa- we got a Facebook group, we got a Facebook page. If there's something you say, hey guys, how about this movie? And we'll say no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we're there for for the people listening, and and in this time, if they need something to occupy their their day to day, then you know we're in the same boat. We'd love to help. Absolutely. So uh, I don't know of anything else that's going on. Just be looking for uh, some more episodes. Uh, we're going to try to get back if we can to try and release uh, a little more consistently. Uh, that's kind of the plan here. And it's been a challenge because all three of us are really, really busy. So we're going to try this, see how it works. Uh, Like I said, if you have questions, comments, any of that good stuff, just let us know. We like for it to be open communicate. Yeah, that (laughs) that too. (laughs) Open communication. Uh, Open communication. I I think you just uh, nullified your own argument there. Hey, (laughs) but don't you have something new coming out, Rick? I do. I just don't know if it'll be out uh, before this will. I don't know. Maybe come out about the same time. Hey, um, so everybody be looking out for Rick's new uh, tandem project with Billy Stewart called uh, Yeah. You Know What's Awesome, right? You, you Know What's Awesome. So uh, Billy hit me up a while back from Scary Dad, if you guys are not familiar with Scary Dad. If you've listened to Helming, you've heard us talk about Billy Stewart quite a bit. Scary Dad is a great podcast. And we're buddies with them. Danny and I both have kind of gotten together. We've done some shows together with the guys from Scary Dad. And uh, also, when I first started, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Billy was on board with it. And we just couldn't get everybody's schedules together. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, he decided he wanted to t- try another another venture and asked me to come along. And uh, it's going to be a fun show. It's going to be just kind of pop culture. First episode is going to be Karate Kid. And uh, it's going to jump around. It's not going to be just movies. It's going to be, hey, uh, you know, you know what's cool? Going back to the old video stores or, you know, it can be anything. Trapper keepers. It can be (laughs) skateboards, uh, albums. So it's going to be kind of an open discussion. It'll be on the Legion Podcast Network. So, uh, yeah, if you want to be checking that out. And I know that Danny and myself both have some ideas that we're kicking around for some other... Uh, skits, I guess you'd say. So uh, we're we're trying to figure out what that is and make that work, but we don't want to reveal too much just yet, unless you want to. Oh, and you know, I think that it's best to keep surprise or at least you know manage uh, expectations on that one because who knows how the the, the day's going to turn. I know I'm still going to work and I still have stuff I've got to do, and I don't want to tell people I'm going to do something when I'm not, but. Uh, you know, I'm Same sure that here. we will keep feeding the lines with something as long as I can work with somebody else. So Right. So, yeah, we're, you know, main thing, folks, is we hope that joining us kind of takes your mind off the chaos that's going on. Uh, you know, we ask that just, you know, be safe, be smart with everything that's going on, folks. We know it's, a, it's kind of a trying time. And uh, we hope that maybe we can, you know, take your mind off of it for an hour or so. And, uh... Yeah, we, we care about you folks. We're in the same situation, and, and it affects everyone. And, uh, you know, we uh, just want to kind of make sure that uh, you're aware that we do care. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys have been our fans for a while, and we're happy to have people to broadcast to. So if there's anything we can do to make your day better, then let us know, you know. I, I unless, unless it's something we don't want to talk about. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the appeal is that, we're good guardsmen of that gate. We're not just right. going to bring anything in. Now, I'm not going to do Doll Man. No. Come on, man. Charles Band? Did I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, folks. That's it for us. Dan, you got anything else? Nope, nope. Just uh, stay safe out there, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. All right. That's us signing out, folks. Sayonara. When a man becomes a baboon and his sister is given to a sailor so they go to an island to find a man with a telepathic daughter and they all go to the Arctic to find a shrine under the northern lights guarded by a saber-toothed tiger who kills a caveman with a horn in his forehead one thing is certain 
you're going to fight a walrus. Well, that's it. Until next time, remember, actions speak louder than catchphrases. Thanks, minions. Members of the audience will receive the following. Classic Curves by Biddos, the pants for Feel Good Company. A gift certificate from Maruchan Ramen Noodles. Rice-a-roni. All guests receive a copy of the El Ming Home Game. Thanks to the creative minds and special appearances of Mark Allison, Jeremy Finch, and Jacob Kennedy. Hell Bing is a proud member of Legion Podcasts. Check out all the great shows at legionpodcast.com. Hell Bing is available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Legion Podcast. This is Dan Pardo saying good night.